If you grew up in the 80s and spent time watching cable or lurking in the video store horror section, then today's movie is probably one of your favorites. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Tibor Takak's cult classic monster movie, The Gate. Released in 1987, The Gate was a staple of late night cable TV and video store horror sections. It's got a young Steven Dorff accidentally opening a portal to hell that he then must close before demons take over the earth. This one was only rated PG-13, but all of us Gen Xers have a soft spot for it in our hearts. I mean, I probably saw this thing like 50 times while growing up. It's cinematic comfort food at this point. But it's also a legitimately good little B-movie. But can it earn a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Erica Boyd, Taylor Shan, and Volcanic Winter. If you'd like to sponsor some videos and help free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Seriously, every little bit helps keep this show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on yet another high effort title card. <laughs> Way to phone it in, guys. Starring Steven Dorff. The rare exception to the old child actors never go on to a successful Hollywood career as an adult theorem. <laughs> oh yeah, Lewis is hilarious. You could say that dude's a real trip. Krista Denton is the anti Steven Dorff. Her acting career was over by 1990. Whoa, Kelly Rowland? They got one of the chicks from Destiny's Child to be in this movie? What? That's Kelly Rowland? Oh, my bad. Hey, Scott Denton. That's two Dentons in one movie. And Ingrid Veniger, who some of you will remember from multiple appearances on Friday the 13th, the series. Directed by Tibor Takox, whose name I'm probably butchering. Tibor would go on to direct the underappreciated I, Madman, and then make what appears to be a bunch of Hallmark Christmas movies in recent years. With the credits over, we head into the movie proper. I'm pretty sure this is where the Stranger Things kids live. And Steven Dorff looks an awful lot like that kid from Eight is Enough. Do <laughs> kids even remember Eight is Enough? Christ, I'm old. Mom? I'm home. I hope you have your clothes on. Not oh, great, they moved away while I was at school. Again. Honestly, does this kid live here or is he pulling a B&E? Looks like mom and dad hit the old peace pipe before moving out, judging by this haze. Wait a minute, this is home alone, isn't it? And now it's night. Continuity is hard. Well, since no one's around, might as well sit in the clubhouse and check out these old Playboy issues. I've been meaning to read that James Caan interview. God isn't having any of that, though. Sinner. This is all pretty tremendous so far. But it turns out it was all just football practice. Man, I had the weirdest dream, buddy. I was a vampire named Deacon Frost and Wesley Snipes was trying to kill me. Damn it, they repoed my treehouse. I was only one payment late. And random zoom in on a chainsaw, because why not? Probably just another Kenny Loggins cameo. Well, the treehouse is dead, but maybe I could save the hustlers. Ah, to be so young and naive. You just know the workers already raided his stash. Anyway, I'm rooting for this movie to finally get going. Young Hank Schrader discovers his love of geodes. I will say it's nice the yard comes with roll-up grass, though. Oh, look, it's a young Mike Bracken. <laughs> I'm lying. I wasn't that cool. And after hours of digging, they finally hit China. It was at this exact moment that Glenn and Terry's relationship finally splintered. Underwhelmed by the fact that this movie doesn't seem to be going anywhere, Al makes a break for it. Now I see why Glenn wasn't impressed by the geodes. Dude's got a secret coke stash in his rocket. To the moon! Well, Glenn's busy cutting his supply with mannitol, Terry's training to become a serial killer. Hey man, that's cruel. Come on. It's neat. Great, now dad's home. Have you boys been digging a hole to China in my backyard again? Inside, we get some exposition. Mom and dad are going out of town and the kids are on their own. God, the 80s were the best. Your parents would just take off and leave you for a week with a $20 bill, the video store card, and the number for the police and wish you luck. Oh, and Glenn's grounded. And after dinner, pal, you fill in that hole. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. The hole in the backyard. Later that night, dad shows up to give Glenn the talk. Listen, son, when a man and a woman love each other very much... Ugh, Dad, stop grossing me out! Hey, hey, let us out! We can't breathe! And just in case you didn't realize Glenn's bedroom is inside the house, here's a house establishing shot. The next day, Mom and Dad head out. Now remember, no boys in the house, and do not under any circumstances let your brother open a portal to hell in the backyard. Yes, Mom. Oh, and I better not come home and find out Kid and Play hosted a house party here or you're both grounded. Judging by that car, looks like they're Audi 5000. Man, not even gone five minutes and the party's already underway. 
You can tell it's a big night for Al because she's crimped her hair and her bangs. I'm not sure if that's hair or crinkle cut french fries at this point. But old helmet hair here seems to like it. Hi there. Upstairs, Glenn and Terry are getting their rocks off. Hell yeah. No, not like that. I mean, they're cracking open this geode. Oh yeah, this thing is definitely getting hammered. Sweet, this geode comes with its own RGB lighting. Outside, it looks like things are getting steamy. <laughs> they probably just buried Tommy Chong out there, even though he's not dead. Don't worry though, because inside, it's as hazy as backstage at a Grateful Dead show. Since the boys aren't exactly getting this party started, maybe Ingrid Veninger can summon up some demons and open the gate. <laughs> at the very least, she's gonna show them how to levitate Glenn. Guessing we're about to see some elevated horror. Oh yeah, this kid is higher than egg prices. And you know what they say, it isn't a house party until the dweeby little brother cries. Terry's gonna sleep over, but of course he's up wandering around in the middle of the night. How is my prostate so enlarged already? I'm 12. Oh shit, Mothra's about to attack. These are probably zombie moths, back for revenge since Glenn and Terry suffocated them earlier. Jesus, do these people live next to a Walmart? That's a lot of light from the backyard. Meanwhile, Terry's like, I feel about 10 pounds lighter. Probably should warn everyone not to go in there for at least 45 minutes. Oh shit, we just wandered into beyond darkness apparently. This is the least intimidating ghost mom since Sherry Moon Zombie. Back in the room, Glenn makes a startling discovery. Great, we've got people living in the walls again. And downstairs, Terry makes a startling discovery of his own. Oh, Angus, you sly dog, you. Nice work, Terry. You killed the dog. The bad news here is the dog is dead. The good news is there's a gaping hole already in the backyard. The next morning, Glenn's kicking Terry out. I mean, for killing the dog, it seems like he's getting off light. Oh yeah, that's the look of a kid who's plotting bloody revenge. Back at Terry's place, he's a latchkey kid too. God, were boomer parents ever home in the 80s? No. Glenn, meanwhile, is concerned about what they've done with the dog. What did you do with Angus? Ah, uh, don't you worry. Now eat your Angus flakes. This tender moment is interrupted by the arrival of Al's friends. What's the matter with him? Is it wrong for room on today? Buzz off, clown face. Sick burn, Glenn. I'd have gone for the hair, but clown face works too. In the least surprising news ever, Terry's bedroom looks exactly like the bedroom every friend I had in the 80s had growing up. I mean, minus the Samantha Fox poster. This air guitar is pretty terrible, though. I mean, what do you think, Ian Sarah? It stinks. Rainbow sheets. And before someone bitches that this movie is too woke. <laughs> Not gonna lie though, this album sounds more interesting than the movie so far. Watching mankind with a hatred that is as boundless as the stars. Oh sweet, he's got the read-along vinyl version of the Necronomicon. Aw, oh, it's baby's first demon summoning ritual. They grow up so fast. Anyway, I feel like Glenn spends a lot of time just staring off into space plotting revenge in this movie. <laughs> oh god, we're gonna look at the dog photos. No lie, this is gonna get me all misty. Hey, close the door! Were you raised in a barn? We're not heating the outside! And with that, I have officially become my father. Outside, Seth Rogen's like, Hey little dude, come hang in my smoke den. <laughs> Fortunately, Terry's here to tell us what this all means. You got demons. It would be nice to get to some demons. I mean, seeing as we're a third of the way through this movie already. How do you know so much about this stuff? Oh, I audited a literature of the occult course down at community college last summer. Here are some of my notes from the lectures. And here's where both Satanic Panic and Tipper Gore got their start. The lyrics in the album tell you how to summon the demons. Can I get you to weigh in on this, Lance Henriksen? That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the next step is apparently playing some Enya backwards. <laughs> They have everything they need for a ritual to open the gate, save for a blood sacrifice. But Loverboy is gonna fix that by tossing Angus in the hole. Okay, can we finally get some demons? Maybe not, because young Dave Mustaine is gonna close the gate. May they freeze in the infinite cold and darkness of their own hideous creation. Then Al interrupts everything. Are you boys out here raising demons again? I'm gonna tell mom. <laughs> oh yeah, they're screwed. Hmm, Rockets and the Supernatural. Maybe he's not young Dave Mustaine, maybe he's young Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons, that's a deep cut reference like four of you might get. That night, they're apparently about to hunt some wascally wabbits. Man, the 80s were so lit, parents would leave you home alone for days with firearms. Then they find Chekhov's rocket. I wonder if that will be important later. I don't want to alarm anyone, but we're halfway into this movie, and so far we've not had a gate or any demons. No wonder everyone's asleep. Glenn's still awake, though. Reading this incantation is probably how he became a vampire. 
things then get really weird. I mean, I'll let the dog sleep in the bed, but not a dead dog. And hey, we have a demon. About friggin' time. And they flee right into mom and dad. Okay, movie over, I guess. Except dad's like, I told you boys not to go open a gate to hell. By God, he's setting them up for the choke slam. Look, this is as good as my JR is gonna get. But Glenn's not going down without a fight. He got him with the eye gouge. With demon parents out front, they decide to head out through the back door. Hell yeah. No, the door at the back of the house. Unfortunately, it's not safe back there either. Looks like those little stop motion monsters from subspecies found their way into this movie too. Hi there. So this is the minion's origin story. <laughs> and apparently these minions are made of spooch. Yeah, let's just roll with it. Anyway, the smart thing to do here would be to call the cops, but it looks like someone's already burning up the lines. Trapped in the house, they need the album from the basement to solve this problem once and for all. I've got all the spells and prayers to banish the demons. Demons? What kind? Um, probably ones from hell. I mean, what other kind of demons are there? Too bad for them, this album is really burning up the charts. With their Book of the Damned well done, they're gonna need a plan B. If only there was a book for dealing with these types of demonic infestations. The Bible. What? Prayers. Yeah, that might work. I will say, I'm very concerned about this girl having an open flame next to all that hairspray holding her bangs up. They head out to prepare for the ritual. Not without some concerns. How do you know, Terry? Because we'd all be dead meat by now. James A. Janice? <laughs> Looks like Rogan must be smoking and live streaming from down there. Jesus, all this bong smoke into the atmosphere is probably going to cause a second ice age. Inhale. Things seem to be working, but then this happens. Great, now Terry's in the pit. I mean, I feel like this is an acceptable loss. Down in the pit, he's accosted by minions, but he gives them a taste of his pimp hand. Then he does his best Willie D from the Ghetto Boys impression and makes them read these Nikes. Oh my goodness. Terry escapes the hole and seals it for good? I'm gonna tell my grandkids this was fracking. And they celebrate their apparent victory. It's gone! It's gone? It's gone! Um, maybe don't spike the ball before you get into the end zone. There's 20 minutes left in this movie. Hey, where'd they find all those garlic cloves? Oh, so that doesn't work against demons. And jump scare. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why are three dudes hiding in a closet? With the house in disrepair, they're gonna need some funds quick. I wonder if we can still sell it. <laughs> Great, now they're gonna have to redo the drywall too. This house is a real money pit. Fantastic, the house is infested with zombies. Orkin's gonna charge a fortune to solve this problem. Guess he's not down with the whole dining in thing because he's taking Terry to go. But hey, at least the drywall is fixed. That seems like a fair trade. <laughs> Damn kids in their graffiti. Upstairs, the zombie is back, but don't worry because Al's about to rock his world with this boom box. That was definitely some hard rock. Glenn runs for the gun, but all he finds is Terry the Rat Boy. <laughs> Dude's probably been gnawing on all the wiring in the walls, which is why none of the lights work in this dump. Then we get a horror film first. A Barbie doll as a weapon. Anyway, they do find Chekhov shoddy, but I'm not sure hiding in the closet is the best idea. Told ya. Great, now they have their two sacrifices. Nice work, Glenn. A second human sacrifice. Might be time to call Blade. Maybe get a Marvel crossover issue happening here or something. Oh yeah, this place is just falling apart. We're gonna need Chip and Joanna Gaines and the Property Bros to fix this place. I mean, really, who builds a floor with no foundation under it? That's just shoddy workmanship. Even the stairs are shot. How'd this place ever pass inspection? A shotgun might have been a dead end, but that's okay because we've still got Chekhov's rocket and I'm guessing that's gonna be a winner. And he's gonna need it because here comes the minion Big Daddy. Definitely feels like a Resident Evil final boss. Or Mortal Kombat's Goro. Hey little man, is that a rocket in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Ah, <laughs> great. Now his hand has turned into the paperback cover for Stephen King's Night Shift. And clearly, Cheech, Chong, Seth Rogen, Snoop Dogg, Redman, and Willie Nelson are down in that hole now. The whole state's gonna get hotboxed at this rate. Damn, it's like the Erd Tree from Elden Ring. With all this debris flying around, it's no real surprise Glenn got something stuck in his eye. Out of options, it's finally time for Glenn to try the rocket. I sure hope this thing works because this would be a terrible time to develop a case of projectile dysfunction. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been here. Houston, we have liftoff. Finish him! Yeah, I'm sure this is fine. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson will be along any second now to tell you that Stephen Dorff flew off at 14 G's and would explode into pieces on impact, but I'm willing to suspend my disbelief. Sweet, they must have bought the house next door to the poltergeist house. 
And now it's the 4th of July in a Canadian movie. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Hey, they must be in the eye of the hurricane. Jim Cantore's probably around here somewhere. Jesus, I sure hope mom and dad were current on their homeowner's insurance. Aw, Angus is back. And what the hell, is that closet a gateway to Narnia or what? The catch is that he's been to the pet cemetery and is now gonna murder everyone when they're asleep. And Terry and Al are back too. Because no way was this movie gonna murder two kids. Plus, it looks like Claudio Fragasso is filming next door. This is basically how every illicit party I had in high school ended. A lot of smoke, but the house was still technically standing. <laughs> I call that a win. And cue credits. So, what have we learned from the gate? Well, for starters, that you can make a horror movie with kid leads who are actually kids and not have it suck. Dwarf, Trip, and Denton are all pretty good in this one. Beyond that, it's also possible to make a kid-friendly PG-13 horror movie that works for adults. Win-win, really. But enough about that. Can the gate summon up enough splatter to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, the gate is pretty light. This was a PG-13 movie, so it's impressive they squeezed any gore in at all. We're treated to some cool rubber monsters, zombies, one brutal eye gouge, a crumbling head, and a shard of glass to the eye. The effects aren't gruesome, but there's enough here to give the gate a two barf bag rating. It's not a sick flick, but if you grew up in the 80s, you love it anyway. Looking for another cult classic 80s monster movie? Then be sure to check out my review of The Blob. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.